is the Tajewala barrage, and today it doesn't exist. The floods of 10, 2010 have actually, this entire area has been swept away. Out of, out of about 15 these, uh, 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 what they call as gates, only about four gates are left. Rest of the gates are already been, they have all gone. Next. Now this is Hatrikund. This is Western Yamuna Canal, which goes to Haryana. And small amount of this water comes back to Delhi for drinking purposes. This is Eastern Yamuna Canal that goes through UP. And nothing comes, reaches Delhi actually now. And this is the downstream of Hatrikund Barrage where they claim that 160 Qsec is left. Now, let me just tell you that even at the, the driest, the leanest period of the year, Hatrikun Baraj still has 4,000 Qsec. And throughout the year, they are claiming, other than monsoon time, that they say only 160, against minimum of 4,000 Qsec, 160 Qsec is released. And it is released for the life in the river. That is the excuse. We are releasing 160 Qsec to maintain life in the river. Imagine. Next, I'll just show you. Now, so, what has happened over, this is uh, information gathered by us using right to information. These are the decades, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, and the first decade of 21st century. Can you see the difference? This indicates the water flowing in the river, downstream of the barrage. So till this point, these are all Tajewala uh, releases in the river. And so Tajewala could never hold that much of water. So perforce it is all in the river. And the river was alive. Taje, Hatnikund was commissioned in 2002. And after that, look at this. This is the water in the river now. And this water is actually all the monsoon water. Because non-monsoon, there is no water in the river, really. Just. And this picture actually shows this. This is March 17, 2009. March 17, 2009 image. This is Hatrikon. This is Tajewala. And this is where River Yamna ends. This is a satellite image. No, no, this, this cannot lie. So the river ends at this point. There is no river Yamna downstream of this point. At least there was no river Yamna downstream of this point on March 17, 2009. So this is the state of this river. Next. Now go, go back, go down. This is Canal C. No. Go down. This is Canal C. This is a very interesting tributary of river Yamuna in the, in, the, in the initial phase of the chicken neck. This is river Som, which brings water to the river uh, at, at two, uh, around 200 kilometers downstream of Yamnotri, about 50 kilometers downstream of Atrikul, which brings some water. This is May 2011, so there is still water. And this is the result of the flood of 2010. So you still have flowing water in Som, but there is no flowing water in Yamuna. And while there is, the river is, the river Yamuna is gasping for breath, the Western Yamuna Canal is actually very, very happy. All the water is in the canal. Next. This is 300 kilometers downstream at a place called as Ramra. May 2011, it is just, there is no river. It is just a, a pond, standing water. This, this used to be another tributary of river Yamuna called as Katha, which unfortunately there is, a, there is a bed, but there is no water. While there is a pond left in the river at, this is, this is Panipat. Uh, the, there are two canals like this in the city of Panipat. They are taking the water away. Next. And that was this year, May 2011. This is April 2010, just a year before. 
no we still found some water in the river in may 2011 just because of the floods of 2010 but in 2010 april this was the river in karnal not a drop of water this was the river in panipat just a very small pond and this was the river in sonipat same time same april month actually same day we have gone to these three places and you can see the river so upstream of delhi the yamuna sir yeah just upstream of delhi minutes. there is no river next now delhi is the first major town on the river source of 90% of all pollution it has converted its 22 little tributaries which were the the storm water drains into sewer and waste water drains and it has set bad example of flood plain encroachments mainly by the agencies of the state themselves next this is the river there is no water up stream of delhi how come this water is there in delhi because it's all the water that has come out of our homes next this was the state of the remaining flood plain because this used to be the the original flood plain the entire is delhi before this embankment was created this was the state of the flood plain in before the last decade of uh, the last uh, no the this 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 decade of the first century uh, the 21st century this was the state so 1999 it was this now is this so in just one decade this much of flood plain has been compromised and most of this this is metro this is yamuna vihar so uh, rajiv rajiv nagar uh, this is akshardham this is commonwealth games village this is another metro this is the power houses so these are all the things which actually and where there were uh, juggi jhopris they were all removed taken away 40 km away to bawana next and what we are getting after commonwealth games this is 61 acre of uh, bus depot and they say this is not in the river bed now if this is not in the river bed then what is river river bed one fails to understand this is uh, no how how could the agencies of the state do this to their own lifeline river next so the reason why 2010 commonwealth games almost did not happen because the floods came This, this, these two structures had no business to be standing here next now go go down river hindan meets uh, river hindan actually comes from there this is the all the slash from faridabad getting into the river there is a dry uh, well sand mining next mathura vrindavan land of krishna agra tourism capital of india 650 km of the yamunotri next this is vrindavan and this is agra imagine this is the tourism capital of this country next bhare 800 km downstream of yamunotri this is where chambal meets yamuna and the beginning of the rejuvenation of yamuna actually it is i would i think it is wrong to call that yamuna anymore it should be called as chambal next this is yamuna bringing all the polluted water into pristine chambal this is chambal going like this this is yamuna bringing all the water you can see all the birds in chambal there was not a single bird in yamuna i have i have more pictures if you don't believe me next alawa 1400 km from yamunotri confluence with river uh, ganga next this is the yamuna in and this is february 2010 imagine what the same river becomes just because of what those tributaries actually bring it and all those tributaries are threatened now because there are dams planned there are barrages planned there are all the things planned there next so we have we have traveled like this and courtesy this we have such a huge river at alawa whereas this chicken neck there is nothing next so notables it's always rivers and not river it is wrong to call 
Yamuna river. It is always Yamuna rivers because it is rivers that make the Yamuna. And then, most importantly, water is not river. River, river is much more than water in it. And all the problems that we have today is just because everybody thinks that water and river are synonymous. They are not. They are very, very different things. River has life, shape, character, and dynamism. Next. So what we have done, we have worked with local people, created what is called as a People River Health Index, using, uh, uh, and it's a, it's a very easily usable tool. Next. These are the four principles of that tool. Next. We have, a, we have a publication. Those of you who are interested, you can look that. These are the various consultations that we had uh, during this testing of this tool. And as you can see, there are people who have already started working for their river. Yamna Maki Dar Jivane Amara, Hindu Muslim Sapko Deti Asahara, Yamna Gram Seva Samiti Ramada. This is as a result of that work, people have actually started working for their, their river. Next. This, this, this is the kind of result at various places. At three places, we found the river to be dying. At majority of the places, it was sick. Only at two places, towards the end, we found it to be healthy. And this is what people have found through that tool. Next. Now, this is a suggestion. How much diversion can actually be done? This is our understanding. We may be wrong. There are two kinds of diversion. When most of diverted water returns unpolluted to the river, that is what happens at, at Dakpatthar. Dakpatthar barrage, it takes away the entire river, but then it brings that entire water back to the river in an unpolluted form. So we think 25 to 35 percent of the daily available in the barrage must flow in the river at that point. When water is diverted for good, or returns in a polluted form, which happens at Hathnikun. It is all that water, most of that water is gone. 50% of the water at, on any day must flow in the river. Now, a lot of people will say, if this is the stipulation, then these projects will become unviable. So be it. Now, what is more important? The project is more important, or the river is more important, or the people along the river is more important. So, and in addition, river must flow free of all barrages for at least three to four days each month during the lean season. January to June, three to four days river can flow uh, if, uh, free of all the barrages. Next. Securing floodplain, RRZ, this has been spoken, we must secure the floodplain using the 100 year return flood as eco-sensitive zone. Next. Some suggestions. A national river policy independent of national water policy. NRCD, which is called as National River Conservation Directorate, needs to go beyond cleaning because that is what they have been doing for the last 40 years now. Emphasis on rivers. Wild rivers as control in different regions. We must have some rivers where nothing should be permitted. River sanctuaries, it is an. It is a myth that central government is powerless. And I will just come to that. In 19, the 1994 MOU between the riparian states must be revisited and MP should be brought in because it is MP that actually <coughs> restores and then talk of first we must safeguard the river and then talk of sharing the water. Emphasis on water demand management, something that uh, uh, doctor, I would say his doctor, Dr. Ramaswamy Ayer has been saying again and again and again. It is demand side management which needs to be done not supply side management, which the Delhi government is now wanting to do. Get more water from Renuka. For what? <coughs> cities like Delhi would not, now, mind my words, cities like Delhi would not survive if their lifeline rivers don't. Delhi has actually started now a negative uh, rate of growth. Next. Now, I just want to draw your attention to this. Entry 56, List 1, that is Union List, 7th uh, Schedule, which gives the power to Union Government. It says, regulation and development of interstate rivers and river valleys 
to the extent to which such regulation and development under the control of the union is declared by parliament by law to be expedient in the public interest. So the government of India has all the powers provided by entry 56 to do, to act in the interest of the rivers. So when people say, a lot of people say, the union government is powerless. It cannot do anything because water is a state subject. No. Water has been made a state subject, conditional, subject to entry 56. That is what entry 74 says. It is subject to this. It is not. So this, it is a myth when people say that because water is a state subject, so union government is helpless. It is not. Thank you.